Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Today's lecture um, is what I call a lecture on diamonds, the word Amen. Um, I think we all say it in one form or another, Amen, Amen. Um, rolls off the tongue, and I think many times we forget about it. How do we understand this concept of Amen? We'll deal with where it comes from and the importance of it and how great it is. They tell a story of a man who was very poor. And um, he had a large family. His daughters were getting older, getting ready to be married. And he had no money. So he had heard a, a stories of a place that was far away where you had to take a ship. But it was an island that was covered with diamonds. That just like we have stones, this island was covered with diamonds. And he had heard it and heard it, and he was so poor, and he had no place else to do, so he got together enough money to board a ship. And he took the ship to this island, and he thought he was probably wasting his time, but what did he have to lose? And as he deboarded, as he left the, the ship and walked onto the ground of the island, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> he was standing underneath his feet, there were just precious gems all over the place. Diamonds galore. And as you can imagine, I mean, he almost had a heart attack from all the joy that he felt. And he started stuffing his pockets. Everything that he could that, had, that could hold anything, he loaded up with diamonds. And he could barely walk. <laughs> he was so laden down with all these diamonds. And doing all of that got him hungry. So he decided, he went to what looked to be the finest restaurant he could find. And he sits down at a table and he orders the most expensive thing on, the biggest steak that he can on the menu, and, he, and the best bottle of wine. And he's in ecstasy. And the waiter comes over after he's had the meal and gives him a bill. And he pulls out a diamond and he fixes, what the heck, he's got, he gives pills out too. He gives the diamond to the um, waiter. And he says, here's another one for you. Keep the change. And the waiter looks at him and says, you're kidding, right? He says, no, no, I, I, you can keep it. I mean it. He says, no, that's not what I mean. You're paying me with this? And he says, it's a diamond. I'm really overpaying you. What do you mean am I paying you with this? Very ungrateful. And the waiter says, you don't get it. Where did you get them? He says, outside. The rabbi says, exactly. They're, you, they're, they're worthless. The diamonds are all over the place. Everybody has diamonds. They're, they're, they're stones. They're nothing. So the man was confused. He says, what has value? What do you use in this country? What's worth something? What, what, what's your money? What's, what's, what's your currency based on? And the waiter said, milk. He said, excuse me? He said, milk. He said, really? He says, yeah. The most precious thing we have on this island is milk. The man with the most milk is the richest man on the island. He says, wow. And meanwhile, the waiter hands him an apron and says, go to the kitchen. You'll be washing a lot of dishes to eat off that meal and the wine that you had. Long, long, make the long story short, he becomes he's a man with a good mind. And he was able on this, on this island to bring certain ideas and inventions that he had from place that he came. And very quickly, he became wealthy. He accumulated a lot of milk. In fact, he accumulated so much milk that it was finally time for him to leave. So he hired a ship, and he began loading all of his barrels of milk onto the ship to go home. And by this time, he was a prosperous-looking man. He had a fine suit, nice clothing, nice hat walking cane and he watched as they were loading all these barrels and one of his friends who he had made acquaintance to with on the island came up to him as they were loading the barrels and he said to him one is I came to say goodbye to you but the other is I've been down on my luck I wonder if you could be kind enough leave me a couple barrels of milk and the man looked at his friend and all the barrels that were going in, more than he needed. After all, he was so wealthy. He said, sure, take those two barrels, they're yours. 
But the friend said to him, I don't want to be a schnorrer. I don't, I don't want to be a taker. So I, I, I know it's worth nothing, but do me a favor. And he took a, he took a pouch filled with the stones that they were standing on. And he said, just as a symbol of me showing my appreciation, please take this pouch of diamonds, just as a symbol of my appreciation. And the man said, sure. And not to embarrass him and put him down on the ground with the same stones that he's standing on, the same diamonds, he puts them into his pocket, into his suit, deep in the, into his pocket. And they hug and they embrace and they say goodbye. And the man takes the ship and he goes back to his country. And word was sent ahead that he was coming back rich with all this wealth. And the ship comes into dock. And they begin taking off one barrel after another barrel of milk. And everybody's wondering, what's in the barrels? And they're wondering. They have all kinds of ideas what it could possibly be. Then they open up the barrel and they find milk. And everybody looks at milk. Milk, we throw it away. It's, it's, use, it's worth pennies here. Not only that, the milk had soured on the trip. So what is it wasn't even worth anything as milk. And the man said, oh, what did I do? What did I do? I forgot what was important in this country. I came back what was important that. And he hits his chest. He says, oi. And then he feels something. And he reaches into his pocket and he takes out this pouch of diamonds that his friend had given him, that he had taken just to be nice. And he realized he had a fortune in diamonds. He still came back a very wealthy man. In life, sometimes there are things that we don't think are that important in this world that are very important in the world to come. And one of those diamonds is amains. Where do we have the concept of saying amain? It says in Hazinu, the Sefer Okeach, based on a Sefer, he says, how do we know that we should answer amain to any blessing? With anything is said, amen meaning true. It says, when I proclaim the name of God, ascribe greatness to our God. That's where the custom comes from, of saying amen. In fact, the Gemara Bracha says, whoever says it makes his amen long, his days and years will be lengthened. Just from saying amen. The Gemara in Shabbos says, Rabbi Shul ben Levi said, when we say Kaddish, we say not just Amen, we say Amen, Yehesh me Rabba Mevarach, the Olam Omei Omaya, which translates to me, may his great name be blessed forever and ever. And the Gemara in Shabbos there says that when a man says Yehesh me Rabba with all his might, all his strength, and a harsh decree in heaven against him for 70 years will be torn up. The Ramah in the Shulchan Aruch Arachayim states, teach children to answer Amen. Once a child says Amen, a little child says Amen, he now has a portion in the world to come just from saying that one term, Amen. The Shlag Kaddish says that when making a blessing like on fruit or anything, say it out loud so a friend can say Amen, which can turn curses into blessings. In fact, the Arizal says the word in Hebrew for curse is klala. Kuf lama lamed he. And if you spell it backwards, it spells Hallel, to praise God, with the Kuf, which has a numerical value of 100, to say 100 blessings every day. So it turns the curse into blessings, just by saying the Amades. The Jerush Moishas says, based on the Hasidus, it says, Amunim Notzer Hashem, that God keeps the faithful safe. Now the word Amunim is also the word Amenim, those that say Amen, that those that just say Amen are kept safe by God. Now it's interesting, based on the uh, Sefer Anoiser, the gematria of the word Amen, Aleph Mem Nud, has an American value of 91, which is the same as the word Malach, angel. That saying Amen properly causes the angels to protect us. They put up a barrier a shield, if you will, just by saying Amen. Also, the Gematria 91 is the Yud Ke Vavke, God's name of mercy, and Adonai, again, which equals 91, so, which translates me God our Master, again, which is connected with prayer. We begin the prayer with the word Adonai. 
And again, this disconnects that a person who says Amen will be helped by God. Now the word Amen, that these, the Ameens protect us. What does it protect us from? So the word Amen, Aleph Mem Nun, is an acronym for three things that destroy us. Three desires, that of Achila, eating, again being gluttonous. Mem is for Mamon, money. And the Nun for Nov, sex. Truth is all the evils in the world can be traced back to these desires. Now, when we say amen, saying amen is not, not good enough. A person has to do a little bit more than say amen. Because you can actually create a problem if you don't do it correctly. A person needs to say amen. Also, a person should have forethought. Same thing with the Heshmei Rabbah. That a person wants to connect and praise God. In fact, a person shouldn't say it too loud. Unless what he's doing is trying to get other people to say it. But at the same time, he should say it so that he does get other people to say it. It's an interesting thing. I don't, many times I don't say it out, I don't say a blessing out loud. I say it around someone who I know will answer. For me, it's a gift. When someone says a blessing around me, and I'm able to say an amen, the truth is one who answers amen. Someone takes a fruit and he makes a blessing. The person who has the amen is even greater than the person who made the blessing. You have no benefit. You're not eating the fruit, yet you're saying amen and joining in to what he said. So when someone says a blessing out loud, I always say thank you, because he's given me an amen. Something where I can buy my world to come, something that I can buy my protection, something that are diamonds just laying around that I can cash very easily in the next world, though there's, here it seems like there's nothing. But there are three types of amens that are basically negative. It's called a hasty amen, a cut-off amen, and an orphaned amen. So what do these mean? So a cut-off, a hasty amen, is if you say amen before the person finishes the blessing. So the person's still saying the words. He hasn't finished it. You see some people are like jackrabbits, that they say amen and the person's still making the blessing. That's not proper. A cut-off amen is where you don't say the actual word amen. You leave off part one, of one or one of the letters beginning or end, so you swallow it, and you really don't say it properly. And the orphaned amen is that when someone makes a blessing, you remember some time afterwards, that seven-second delay that they have on, uh, on, on television where they have a break before it happens. Again, that too is incorrect. What's the problem with them? But as I said that a hasty amen, when a person does it too quickly, they had, the result of that is the end, the end of his life will be hastened. That's how important amen is. Cut off amen, that his days will be cut off. An orphaned amen, his children will be orphaned. People have no idea. No idea. It's, imagine someone who was given time in a vault filled with riches and instead of picking things up what he does is he's schmoozing you know he's nonchalant there's no rush or he leaves <laughs> all means is being all means are given to us by God as diamonds for us to pick up and to save and such an easy thing to do and sometimes that's the biggest problem in life when things are so easy we treat them nonchalantly or disregard them completely so a person should know that when you hear a blessing, have an ear and say amen. You don't have to yell it. Just say amen. Very simple words. And have in mind that what God wants from us is true and connecting to the source. And at the end of time, all those little pennies that you've picked up, these little amens, will turn into a fortune that will help you on that day of judgment and in every day that you live to lengthen your life, to improve your life and to help the life of your family in all ways. May God bless you with all the omens that you can possibly say. God bless and have a great Shabbos.